In today's video, we're gonna talk about what your basal metabolic rate is, how your body uses energy at rest, what the typical averages are for women and men, and why these are very, very good for setting a calorie floor which you don't want to go below. Hey, I'm Lindsay from FitFolk, and in today's video, we're talking about your basal metabolic rate. And you know, your basal metabolic rate is just wonderful because it gives you this budget of food you can eat each day without exercising, without removing, that you can just use that energy and not get fat. So for example, if my BMR is 1800, over the course of a year, that's 650,000 calories that I can eat without gaining any weight, without doing any exercise. It's incredible, right? So first up, I'm just gonna talk about what it is. Now, it is basically your resting metabolism, the amount of energy that your body uses at rest. And you know, we call it the basal metabolic rate. A similar, slightly different measurement is the resting energy expenditure. And it's just basically all the processes keeping your body alive or your organs working away and it's this chunk here at the bottom. Typically, it makes up about 60% of your total energy expenditure. That's all your total daily energy expenditure, everything that you use. So you have your resting metabolism, about 10% is digestion, your thermic attack of food. Another kind of, you know, 20% is activity, so your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and on top there's exercise. So your, your EAT, your exercise activity thermogenesis. The bit we're interested in here is your resting metabolism, it's the biggest chunk. On average, it's about 60%, but I've looked at some data and it can vary from all the way down at 40% um, in super active kind of athletic populations, all the way up to 90% in kind of stagnant, bedridden, uh, unhealthy or, or sick populations. So this is what it is. That's why we're interested in it because it's, it's the biggest chunk of your energy expenditure and it's kind of the bit that you get for free. So it's absolutely amazing and you want to protect it. Okay, next up, I want to talk about how your body actually uses energy at rest. So what we're doing is we're taking this basal metabolic rate, the resting metabolic chunk, and we're working out how it's divided up. And I grabbed a whole bunch of data out of this really clever paper to give you an idea of how this works, because it's really fascinating, and it can help debunk a really funny myth that I see all the time about how you can improve your metabolism. So, first up. Muscle takes up about 22% of the total. So muscle is metabolically active, it's constantly turning over, so you, you just need some energy to maintain muscle, 22%. Then there's fat, people used to think that fat wasn't metabolically active. It isn't very active for the amount of it, but it is active on some level, just 4%. Then you've got your brain, 19%, that's a big chunk of energy. Your brain, for its size, is incredibly energy hungry. Next up is your liver. Once again, your liver is also massively energy hungry. This is about 25%. So in most people, your liver is using more energy than your muscle. Then we've got kidneys at 10%, the heart at 5%, and the leftover at 15%. Now, the really interesting thing about this is people constantly conflate the idea of your BMR, your resting metabolic rate, with muscles. People just think people have more muscle, have really big BMRs, and less muscle, have low BMRs. And, you know, this is true to a degree, but it's only about a quarter of the game. It's only a small section. And lots of your BMR is pretty much just programmed in based on your organ size and your genetics. And there's very, very little you can do to affect it. Like if you really starve yourself, it will downgrade. And if you constantly overeat, it will upgrade. But a lot of it is just, you know, what you've got to live with. And the really interesting thing is that people go on and on about building more muscle to improve your memory, and that's true. But you'll often hear people say 50 calories for every pound of muscle that you build. And this is just total nonsense. The real number is closer to five, between five and six, which is actually a very small amount. And you know, I'll show up a graph now. You could do years, absolutely years of weightlifting and it's only gonna improve your BMR by kind of 200 calories a day. And the interesting thing about this is if you're just looking to expend more energy, then yes, it's good to lift. You wanna lift weights that will help protect your metabolism, but it's a lot easier to increase your energy expenditure through your neat and general activity because that is the biggest factor in variation in our energy expenditure. Okay, and this last bit, we're gonna talk about what the average BMRs are. Now, I, I, I've never seen a good distribution of this or good data for this on the web, but I found a report, which is the dietary reference intakes from America, and based on a population of about 700 people, these are the averages, and they're really, really fascinating. So basically, in this distribution, 
the, the median woman, so the woman right in the middle, had a BMR of about 1,360 calories, which aligns pretty well with the calculations, right? So 1,360, and the vast majority, it's a bell-shaped distribution, but the vast majority of the women were between 1,100 and 1,500. So really typical for a woman to have a BMR of about 1,300, 1,400, and then, you know, 1,100 is a little bit low. Anything above 1,500 is amazing. That's a higher BMR. And then there was one person in this sample below um, 1,000, I think, and there are a couple of people way up above 2,000, so a BMR of kind of 2,200, 2,300. So that's the typical range for women, really typical for you to be in around 1,300, 1,400. For men, men are luckier. They have you know bigger bodies, bigger organs, more muscle mass, so they have more um, energy expenditure at rest. So for men, the more typical range was between 1,500 and 1,900 and the median was 1745. So it's really normal for a guy to have a basal metabolic range in that 17, 1800 range. And then, you know, if, you, if your BMR's up at 2000, that's, much, that's, that's high, that's pretty decent. Whereas if it's um, down around 15, 1600, that's quite low. And then right at the bottom, I think, you know, this is an age group of between 20 and 70. There were some people way down around 1200. So these are the pretty typical ranges. And they are actually pretty, pretty good to calculate. Like your total daily energy expenditure, calculating that is a total mess. Calorie calculators are completely useless. But when it comes to your BMR, actually calculating your BMR is pretty accurate. So um, the best calculation, um, there's a, a study, a, a comparison study. The best calculation is the Mifflin Sandura. I'll, I'll probably stick a link to a calculator below. And basically you just stick in your numbers and it will pop out and it's very likely for that number. So if you stick in your age, weight, height, whatever, it's going to give you a number. Say mine comes out at 1800. It's not going to be exact, but it's very likely that it's between plus or minus 10% and extremely likely that it's in the plus or minus 20% range. So the Mifflin St. Jaw, that's pretty much the most um, accurate way to calculate it. In terms of looking after your BMR, there are just a few basics. Like you want to do some type of resistance training. Um, just to keep it, um, particularly if you're losing weight, that's going to really help you just keep the muscle mass on and keep a little bit of upward pressure on your resting metabolic rate. Want to eat enough protein, want to make sure that you just don't starve yourself. Um, so when you're dieting, try and do it cyclically, like do a phase where you're losing weight and then do a phase where you're maintaining. And that, funnily enough, plateaus are really good for kind of helping you maintain your resting metabolic rate, basal metabolic rate. Okay, and lastly, as I mentioned at the start, one really great practical use for knowing your BMR is giving you a calorie floor. Because basically this is the amount of energy that your body needs to just sustain all its basic organ processes, primary. And when you're digging below that, you're kind of sending some metabolic, some hormonal signals that you're really pushing it. And a really good way to use it is just not to eat below your BMR because, you know, at very least you're sustaining the processes and then the, the activity expenditure, the exercise of the activity, whatever else is on top of that, that's how you're burning your fat. So basically, it's really good if you know as a guy, say your BMR is 1800, that's a great calorie floor. And for a woman, you know, 13, 1400, that's a really good calorie floor. You don't want to be digging down on 1200 calories because, you know, that's quite horrible and, um, you know, you can push it a little bit too hard and that will affect your ability to keep a really um, kind of thriving metabolism. So that's a practical use for it. If you love this stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our email list and check a comment if you know what your BMR is because um, I find this stuff fascinating. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you jump on the email list and get our five simple strategies to start losing weight cheat sheet.